Virtually every plastic component we use in our day-to-day -day lives started off life as a plastic pellet and more than likely was transported by rail at some point. Pellets are transported in large covered hoppers and rail manufacturers began to produce these hoppers in the 1970s. Procor was one of these and after several years of development introduced their first 5820 cubic foot cover hopper in 1978. Procore would continue production through the 1990s in several batches, eventually producing a fleet around 1,700 examples that can still be seen across the country today. Rapido announced the release of the Procore example in July of 2021, and dealers received the models in November of 2022. This brand new model had a solid release with three total road names, but seven paint schemes, leading to a total of 48 road numbers from Rapido. The cars are available in single, three, or six packs with an MSRP of a single car marked at $54.95. The model that we will be taking a look at today is EHSX123054, and this is a pretty unique car from this run as this was bought from Procore to be used for seed service. Originally built in 1984, this car was repainted in 2015 and is a good representation of 5820 hoppers in the modern era. Checking out the details on the A end of the car, one of the most detailed areas of interest on the car are the end cages. Both end cages are molded in a single plastic piece with all the structural aspects and plastic grab irons. On the inside of the end cage, some of the braking components are exposed and accurately modeled. The linkage details are on the right with the bits extending through a hole in the car body end. The air plumbing details are molded in a separately applied plastic component extending through a hole on the left side of the airline with a visible vent valve component on top. The plastic end cage translates well into the car body sill where some separately applied metal grab irons mesh well to give some good fine detail aspects as well. Between the two grab irons is the etched metal crossover platform that really stands out against the gray car body paint. The model also features separately applied metal coupler cut bar details that extend from the side sill to the coupler draft gear box. The coupler is a Rapido brand semi-scale metal coupler with magnetic trip pins. The A end is finished off with the plastic train line air hose. This detailed component shows some highlight painting with the glad hands painted in a silver metallic paint against the black paint on the hose. The first thing to notice about these cars when they're taken out of the box is the large size compared to more traditional grain cars. But despite this, the sides of the hopper are relatively plain. There are some details, but most are isolated towards the end cages on either side. The first of these is the separate applied metal grab irons, similar to the ones seen earlier on the side. Just below these grab irons are the separately applied plastic stirrup steps extending below the car body side sill. Just to the right of the grab irons is the brake release rod handles. These are metal wire details only found on the B end, extending from the triple valve to the sides on either end. Another braking component detail is the retainer valve position handle that extends from the triple valve. Continuing down, some of the molded on details include the tack board on the side sill and the jacking pads just below the boards. The rest of the sides are pretty plain with the notable features are the printing and painting. For this repainted model, the old Procore logo can be seen painted over against the gray base color. The B end of the car is pretty packed with details and such the end cage is filled with the majority of the braking components. But first we'll take a look at the patch out details on the end where the old Procore reporting marks are painted over with the new Essex Hybrid Company while retaining the old Procore number. The actual end cages of the car are slightly different with the molded on brake wheel assembly integrated into the support columns of the end cage. The brake wheel is a separately applied plastic component as well as the brake chain that extends through the crossover platform to the underside. On the inside of the end cage starting on the left is the air piston with the air receiver tank mounted on an elevated platform in the middle. Just below the tank is more of the brake linkage details translating the motion from the air piston down to the truck brakes. On the right side is the triple valve with the plastic air plumbing details connecting all these components together where applicable. Similar to the sides of the car, the top of the model is relatively plain. The dominating feature is the very nicely done etched metal walkway. This walkway has the Apex style slotting with a yellow plastic painted grab iron on either side of the car. In the center of the walkway are the hatches to the interior of the car. These hatches are a road specific detail so your hatch variations may differ. On this model, there are two styles of hatches. The simpler hatches that start off on either side and have a total of six are the original design that would have been delivered with the cars from Procore. The larger hatches, which only have four on this car, are the vented hatches or the late style. 
Included with the car is a details bag that also includes a third hatch option, this replacement style of the original, which had additional support ribbing and can be swapped onto the car. Flipping the car over to check the bottom, the covered hopper rides on the 100 ton Barber S2 trucks. The trucks are similar to previous Rapido releases. Included with the trucks are the brake bracket details, as well as molded on spring details as well. The trucks are equipped with the Rapido 36 inch metal wheels as well. The outlet gates are the main details on the bottom of these covered hoppers. For the Essex hybrid cars, they were converted to seed service and thus the outlet gates are upgraded to the minor gravity outlet gates. The minor outlet gates are relatively plain and only have molded on details where the pneumatic gates on the other cars have separately applied metal details and are a little bit nicer than the ones seen here. The car is fitted with the Rapido brand semi-scale metal couplers and the coupler heights were compared to the KD height gauge. On the model, the car was found at the correct height for both the A and the B end. The weight of the car was also measured and this car body length is pretty good at eight and three quarters inches long. So the NMRA recommended weight is 5.38 ounces or 152 grams. The actual car weight was 5.89 ounces or 167 grams, so the car is a little bit overweight by about a half an ounce or 14 grams. The metal wheels were measured for gauge and found to be at the correct tolerance, and the car was slightly knocked over to check for body wobble and found to have a slight wobble on them. The truck screws were attempted to be tightened, but found that the screws were bottoming out in the hole and couldn't be tightened anymore, so a little bit of a body wobble issue. For the scoring section of the review, the score will be broken down into several categories, each with their own point totals, adding up to 100 possible points. The model comes into the standard Rapido packaging, included with the exploded parts diagram, extra details, and stickers for the modeler. The paint on the model is overall well done, with an opaque, even base coat, as well as some highlight painting across some of the details, and good patch-out printing on the old Procore symbol. One minor issue I did see was the patch out detail work on the car body ends was notably crooked compared to the car body lines. This car was manufactured in 1984, but this particular prototype was repainted in 2015 and would be prototypical for any time after that date. Most of the model is accurate to the prototype minus a lack of a few details like the ACI tags. Overall, I thought the details did a fine job. That being said, it appears the details would have been top notch about 10 to 15 years ago. And since then, the bar has been raised. The biggest of these are focused around the end cage details that were just a single plastic piece. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. The grab irons and support pieces though are on the thicker inside, indicative of a cheaper model. Other smaller issues I thought that could have been better were the stirrup steps were also a little bit thick. Train line air hoses made of plastic as well as rotating roller bearing caps. All of these are a little bit on the cheaper side and not a premium model at a premium price. The couplers, trucks, and wheels are all pretty standard for Rapido at this price point. Most of the upgrades coming so within the last year or so. The scale metal couplers are both at the correct height and the Barber S2 trucks and the 36 inch metal wheels but lacking rotating roller bearing caps so I will take off a point. The car operates well down the track. This model has good weight in accordance with the NMRA recommendations, as well as the metal couplers and the wheels. One thing to note was the body wobble issue that couldn't be fixed with the tightening of the one truck and bottoming out against the bolster. Coming in at $55 a pop, the car value has a lot to live up to, and overall I thought it did a pretty good job, but still fell flat in a few areas, especially for the end cage details. Some of the issues are a little bit indicative of a cheaper model, which would be fine at a lower MSRP, but at $55, and this car's case is very expensive and should be held to a higher standard. And for the miscellaneous section, I kind of already touched on everything I wanted to talk about. The only other thing I will mention is that the Rapido also included the additional details for the roof top hatches, so modelers can have a more correct model. Tailing up all the points gives an 89 out of 100 or a B plus rating. And when comparing this model to recently reviewed models, Rapido Pro Core 5820 winds up on a little bit lower than expected. And overall, I feel like this is a pretty accurate score and overall is a pretty good spot for the impression I got when taking this model out of the box. At first glance, this car is very nicely done and appears to have all the details you could ever want. But when you kind of start looking at it and comparing it to the prototype photos, there are a few inaccuracies and really just a lot of missed opportunities that Rapido could have really knocked this out of the park. 
That being said, the car looks really good when it's just by itself, and there's no denying that when you compare it to other models released by other manufacturers with a similar price range, the discrepancies really start to show themselves as it's pretty easy to pick up the better model when comparing two models side by side. For brand new models like this, I usually like to pick up one or two to check it out before purchasing any large number of them. And I think after getting this single car, I'm happy with the number of cars I've gotten. I will say that it's very nice that Rapido can go out and make very unique cars like this, which only have a relatively low number of real world examples produced, especially for the Canadian customers, which often seem to get left behind on the more mainstream model production runs. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you guys are going to be picking up any of these or if you think my analysis on the details and other areas where the model fell flat are accurate and if you agree with them, especially around those end cages. But I am going to leave you guys with one more run-by shot of the model, but comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.